Cloud recording is up. Backup is rolling. Leonardo. Good morning, everybody. One second, Chair. One second. Chair, one second. Uh, good morning and welcome to the remote council hearing on the Committee on General Welfare. At this time, we ask that all council staff turn on the video for verification purposes. Please place all cell phones and electronic devices to silent or vibrate to minimize disruption. Mr. Chair, we're ready to begin. Thank you, Sergeant. Good morning, everybody, uh, and welcome to this vote on the City Council's Committee on General Welfare. Today, the committee will vote on two bills sponsored by Council Member Mark Levine, co-sponsored by Council Member Vanessa Gibson, concerning protecting the rent rights of tenants. Intro 1529A and 2050A. Uh, first, I want to acknowledge my colleagues that are here. We are joined by Council Member Lander, Grudenchik, uh, Council Member Salamanca, Levine, Council Member Traeger, um, Council Member Dharma Diaz. Um, and I want to give us a uh, special welcome to Council Member Feliz for his first uh, hearing with the General Welfare Committee, first vote. So, Welcome, Council Member. Um, so I'll just read briefly uh, on the bills. The, the COVID crisis has underscored the importance of safe and secure housing with the Center of Disease Control issuing guidance for a nationwide eviction moratorium. It has never been more apparent that housing is healthcare and human right. It is both a public health and economic priority to keep people in their homes for the duration of the pandemic but the moratoria will eventually end and we must have a plan in place to accommodate what could be a massive influx of new clients in need of assistance. The bills that we are voting on today will ensure that tenants become more engaged and educated about their rights in housing court and have access to legal services. Intro 1529A would require the Office of the Civil Justice Coordinator to collaborate with community groups in engaging and educating tenants on their rights in housing court and then report on their efforts. Intro 2050A would expand the right to counsel for tenants facing eviction proceedings starting June 1st of this year instead of the current phase in. The right to counsel has contributed to a 30% reduction in evictions in the city between 2019, February of 19 and February of 20. And intro 2050A will expand upon this success by ensuring access that access is not limited to zip code. I thank the advocates, members of the public, and those with lived experience who testified in favor of these bills. At this time, I'd like to turn to my colleague, Council Member Mark Levine, for a statement on these bills. I'd like to uh, quickly thank my staff, Jonathan Boucher, Chief Staff, the Full Hunt Legislative Director, and Committee Staff, Amanda Kilowan, Senior Counsel, Crystal Pond, Senior Policy Analyst, Natalie Omery, Policy Analyst, and Frank Sarno, Finance Analyst. Uh, Council Member Mark Levine. All right, thank you so much, Chair Levin. I'm not gonna give a full statement because I'll, I'll do that at the stated today. I just wanna briefly thank you, uh, Chair Levin, for bringing these bills to the floor so quickly at a moment where we face a potential emergency for tenants with an avalanche of evictions. And these two bills will protect tenants in two critical ways, as you explained. First, by taking the successful right to counsel law to every zip code in every borough immediately, um, accelerating what had been a planned five-year implementation so that no tenant facing an eviction has to confront that without the benefit of an attorney. And I'm so thrilled we're pulling this uh, off today ahead of the scheduled end of the eviction moratorium. And secondly, um, intro 1529 ensures that people know they have this right by deploying community-based groups throughout the city, contracted with the city to organize tenants so they understand that if they ever face evictions, they will have protection by provision of an attorney. So they stand and fight, fight for their rights. Uh, this will be a great equalizer in struggles with landlords. Two big bills coming at just the right moment. Uh, I thank you, Chair Levin. I profoundly thank Speaker Corey Johnson for pushing this forward. And a special shout out to my friend and colleague, Council Member Vanessa Gibson, who has been my partner in this effort over the last seven years. Thank you so much. Thank you, Council Member Levine.
Uh, I, I actually, uh, Councilmember Gibson would like to uh, make some remarks as well. Councilmember Gibson. Thank you so much, Chair Levin. Good morning, colleagues. Uh, thank you so much. I apologize for my delay, so sorry. <laughs> um, I am proud to join Councilmember Mark Levine, my partner in this effort to support today's agenda items. Uh, intro 2050 is going to significantly expand the right to counsel law that was passed back in 2017, which many of you supported. And it really gives so many of our tenants the ability to have um, legal representation as they're facing eviction and housing court. And since that time in 2017, we've seen a significant reduction in the number of evictions, almost 40%, and that was prior to COVID. And we know that with the eviction moratorium in place, there are about 30,000 evictions that are pending in housing court. So I think it's our best interest as a city council to stay ready so we don't have to get ready and make sure that we are prepared for the wave of evictions that we know we will see. Intro 2050 recognizes that the right to counsel law, the five-year phase in, it recognizes the global pandemic of COVID-19 and how it has further exacerbated so many rent burden tenants, many of whom lost their income and lost their employment and have fallen behind in rent. So I'm so proud of this day. I'm so proud of the movement from the Right to Counsel Coalition and so many organizations like CASA and Northwest Bronx and the Right to Counsel Coalition the Homeless Can't Stay Home Coalition members, everyone that was really united around this particular issue. And intro 1529 would require the Office of Civil Justice Coordinator to collaborate with all of our small community-based organizations and community partners in engaging and educating our tenants on their rights in housing court and reporting on their efforts. We know that the best way that we can get this information out is through comprehensive education and outreach. And it's one step for us to pass legislation and codify it in local law, but we also have to take it another step to make sure that New Yorkers are educated about the laws we pass and how it benefits them. I'm so grateful to you, Chair Steve Levin. Thank you for being a relentless advocate for so many New Yorkers that are rent burdened, uh, that are facing eviction and harassment by landlords every day. We see those faces. We know that they are our constituents and we have to do everything possible to help them. So thank you so much. Thank you, Councilmember Mark Levine for always being a great partner in this effort. I'm so proud to call you my friend and partner in this. Uh, we just continue to do this groundbreaking legislation that relates to right to counsel and balancing the scales of justice in housing court. So I proudly vote aye on today's agenda and encourage all of my colleagues on general welfare to do the same. Thank you so much, Chair Levin. Thank you, Councilmember Gibson. Um, and with that, I'll turn it over uh, to William Martin, clerk, to call the roll. Sure, good morning, William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on general welfare on proposed introductions 1529A and 2050A. Both items are coupled, Chair Levine, I mean, excuse me, Chair Levin. I vote aye on all. Lander. With uh, just profound congratulations and gratitude to council members Levine and Gibson on this tremendous legislation and its extension and it's coming right on time. I enthusiastically vote aye on all. Thank you, Gibson. I proudly vote aye on all, thank you. Traeger. Aye. Gorenchik. Aye. Yeah. Give me one quick second. Hold on. Salamanca. I vote aye. Thank you. Dharma Diaz. As, as a housing advocate and know that housing is a right for all, I vote aye. Thank you. Feliz. Aye. Proudly vote aye. Thank you. Okay, one moment. By a vote of eight in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, both items have been adopted by the committee. Okay. Oh, wonderful. Um, I don't think we need to keep the roll open. We do not. You can close. Okay. Okay. What, what was uh, the with, count again, Billy? <laughs> eight. Eight in the affirmative, zero in the negative, no abstentions. I love it. 
Congrats. Sounds good. Thank Congratulations, uh, Councilmember Levine, uh, Councilmember Gibson, on a hard-fought victory here uh, on behalf of, of New Yorkers in need. Uh, I know how much work you both have put into this and, and uh, very, very uh, grateful to you. And with that, uh, this hearing is adjourned. The live has ended. Thank you. <laughs>